There is occasions and causes why and wherefore in all things. William Shakespeare. Everything in life has a cause and an effect. And when studying history, it is important to look for both of these in order to fully understand the broader context of history and to not blindly blame people or dehumanize others. But what is cause and effect? And how does it help us fix these problems? I'm Bree, and welcome to the Scholarly Cheese Guild, where today we will tackle the idea of cause and effect in history. What exactly is cause and effect? Well, according to yourdictionary.com, it is a relationship between events or things where one is the result of the other or others. Now, that's a little bit confusing, so to better explain, consider this scenario. There is a man who is sitting on a hill eating a big wheel of cheese. After he finishes this delicious wheel of cheese, he gets rather sleepy, so he decides to take a nap. To take a nap, he decides to lay on a nearby boulder. However, whenever he lays on the boulder, the boulder shifts and starts to roll down the hill. Once it reaches the bottom, it unfortunately crushes a poor man's cabbage cart. Oh, my cabbages! Now, in this scenario, one thing led to another and the unfortunate result was crushed cabbages. This is the idea of cause and effect. Next, we'll discuss the idea of why it's important to use this theory in studying history. But before we do that, I hear that Jack has a fact for us today. Take it away, Jack. <sighs> All this talk about cabbages has induced my stomach acids. I require a snack. Are you trying to kill me? Next, you were planning on offering me a glass of milk. How dare you attempt to give me the fruit that killed the 12th president of the United States? Hmm? Oh, did you not know that? Well, it's actually a really funny story. President Zachary Taylor unfortunately passed away on July 9th from gastroenteritis, which was caused by him eating too many cherries and drinking milk. At the 4th of July celebration in 1850, the poor man... This fact is quite jackalicious. That was actually pretty interesting. Thanks, Jack. So far, we've talked about what cause and effect is, but you may still be wondering, why is it important for us to look at history this way? Well, there are two main reasons for this, and they kind of tie in together. The first is that it establishes a broader context for history, and the second is that it humanizes everyone. The first reason is that it establishes a broader context, and an example of this is the Mongol invasions of the early 13th century. Now, while it may seem plausible, the Mongols most likely didn't start their conquests for no reason. There were many factors that went into these, and one of the big ones was weather. Now, a big part of the Mongols' lives were animals. They were essential to the nomadic lifestyle of this clan of people. Now, they were a main resource for food, trade, transportation, but in around the time of 1180 to 1220, there were temperature drops in Mongolia, which caused these plants to die. When the plants died, the animals died, and so did the Mongols' way of life, which caused them to have to move, which made others have to move, and this created a sort of domino effect. So by looking at the weather, we can establish a broader context to this situation, which leads to our second reason why we study cause and effect in history, and that is that it humanizes everyone. When we look at this situation and say, and then the Mongols invaded, this can create bias against people who might not necessarily deserve it. But when we look at the broader context and say, and then the Mongols invaded because they needed land to survive, this way we can avoid dehumanizing people who really just needed food. Now, 
Was invading others the right decision? Probably not. Were the Mongols nice people? I'll leave that up to you. But did they invade others for no reasons? As a general rule, they did not. That's why it's important to study cause and effect in history, as establishing a broader context can prevent one-sidedness and the dehumanization of others. Before I go, I want to propose a question for you to ponder. What have been some situations in your life where seeing the broader context changed the story?